have a little bit more of a practical video that I'd like to share with you guys and I'm going to focus on filling and burping the coolant system in the Fiat 124. Hopefully this will be applicable to 1800 and 2000 series. Um, specifically, this is my 1977-124 barn find. Go back and check the videos. Recently got it running. It's doing great, um, but fall's approaching quickly and I want to make sure this has got fresh coolant and it's properly topped off and bled and burped. So that's going to be today's episode. Let's get into it. Okay, before we get into the nitty gritty, let's get a few things out of the way first. I'm assuming that you've already drained the radiator fluid and you're ready to add some. Um, that includes the drain plug on the exhaust side of the engine over here. Second place you wanna look for obviously is the radiator itself. There should be um, a plug on the bottom of your radiator. Mine is on the driver's side, bottom left there of the radiator. We'll drain all that out. Make sure everything's disconnected. And um, I'm gonna pull off one little hose right there. Uh, the second thing you need to, to um, that you want to make sure is engaged is that your heater is turned on. It's going to open up the heater control valve and make sure that you're getting all the fluid through the heater core and get any air out of that. Do that if you haven't. You're going to push forward the heat and don't mind my terrible controls. I have all new replacements for that. That'll be coming up in a different episode. You need to look at this control valve that is right here. So if you need to give it a little help. You might need to push on that a little bit to make sure and let's see if mine moves so we can take a look at it so this is off now when i push it forward it doesn't always that's doing pretty good just make sure that's open all the way there we go i got the rest of the way that's going to let um, coolant flow through the radiator sorry that's going to let coolant flow through the heater core and uh, make sure you get everything out Okay, I've got my 50-50 mix ready to pour in. I've got a funnel ready. And one other um, trick that you really, if at all possible, you can do is get a jack under the car. And we're gonna raise the uh, raise the car up the front end as high as possible. That gets the radiator up um, and gets the highest point above um, some of the hoses and the cooler, coolant hoses here. And it really helps get the bubbles from the back coming up. So I'm gonna jack that up right now. Okay, I've got the car jacked up pretty high. I'm gonna disconnect this radiator hose and I'm gonna pour coolant directly into that hose until it's full. And I'm gonna pour coolant into the radiator until that's full. And I'm gonna wait a little bit and just let any air come out. I'm gonna massage the hoses, try to work out as much air as I possibly can. So let's do that next. Okay, we're in pretty good shape now. I've got the, this hose reattached. I've got it filled. I've got it topped off on the radiator and um, just about ready to go on to the next step. And this is really the key to getting a successful burp on this coolant system. And um, it has a lot to do with this T right here and getting, um, getting it bled out of this T. Now, depending on the model you have, it might have a bleeder screw here. Um, that's pretty common. There's also aftermarket tees that you can get that have that bleeder screw, and that's super helpful. Um, obviously, in my case, I don't have a bleeder screw, but what I've done is I've made a bleeder hole on my radiator hose. At this point, it's it's completely covered up, and when I'm finished, I'll clamp that down, and it will seal that bleeder hole. Um, so what I'll do in the meantime is I'll just slightly pull this hose open, so that bleeder hole now is um, is open. And then I'm gonna um, put the radiator cap on and seal it tight. That's also important. That allows pressure in the coolant system to build up. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna start the car. We gotta get it up to temperature. It's still, um, the front end is still raised up so that this bleeder hole, it's above the radiator. You can see, so, um, so that will allow more um, air to come to the top of the system. In fact, 
Um, the only thing in the coolant system that's about that high is this radiator hose here. Um, they're about the same height, so there's a chance that we might get some air stuck in there. We'll see. Hopefully, um, we're in a pretty good spot where we can get all that air uh, pumped out of there. So we're, we're going to run the engine until the uh, thermostat kicks open, right? And then that's going to start pressurizing the coolant system. It's going to start circulating the coolant. And eventually, once it gets um, hot enough, there's enough pressure, this is going to start to bubble. And we're going to get, um, first it's going to bubble and foam's going to come out of there everywhere. can be kind of messy, so I'm going to have a rag ready. Um, but it will be pretty hot, so um, we don't want to get burned. But once I feel that there's sufficient um, air has been bled out of the system, I will push the hose on and tighten it down, and um, that would end the process. So um, it's going to be too loud with the engine running to, um, to talk over that, so I'm just going to show you what that looks like. See, it's already starting to get warm. It's starting to bubble. All that air is coming out of there. That's good. It's just gonna, you just have to be careful because it's gonna drip on your belts. You don't want to get your belts saturated and coolant. As long as it's bubbling like that, that means there's air in the, uh, there's air in the coolant. All right, it's looking better. I'm getting a lot more liquid and a lot less air bubbles. And now it's starting to shoot out squirts of liquid. Okay? And now I'm going to just go ahead and tighten down my, my clamp. And that's it. You get everything tightened back together, cleaned up. Uh, we're buttoned up here. The other thing just to remember is before the next couple drives, just um, check the radiator level and top it off as necessary. There might still be a little residual air that gets pushed out of the system or back into the coolant tank. And, um, and at that point, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you've got the correct level in the radiator system. So we'll drop the car back down, we'll close her up and we'll go for a drive and make sure everything um, doesn't leak. So that'll be the other last step. And uh, anyway, that wraps this one up. Appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you have any other techniques that make this easier or uh, helpful and I would love to uh, see you on the next one.